Well, hello everyone and welcome to today's Wednesday walkabout or it's also kind of a garage walkabout. Stuart, I'm going to do something I don't typically do and that's going to be that I'm going to show my garage. Now it's dark in there, but nevertheless, well let me open the garage door. That'll give us a little bit more light. A lot of you have asked whether or not we actually park our cars in the garage. And yes, Dot has been, has, I've parked Dot in, Dot, by the way, is my little Fiat, my own little Department of Transportation. And she gets parked in the garage all of the time, but we've been cleaning out the garage because it's kind of just been a repository for all of our junk as we work on all of our different projects. But this weekend, we did start cleaning some things up so on the right is is just all of the mess so let's not linger on the right but on <laughs> on the left you can see that i've already tidied all of this and i've kind of organized it some so i there is method to my madness a lot of the stuff over here will it'll either be given away or reorganized. But once all of this is cleared out, then yes, we will have room for both of our cars in here, which in the winter time will be, will be very nice. One of the things that we did, and one of the concerns I had quite frankly about moving into the cottage was ingress and egress, getting into the cottage and out of the cottage because it is a cottage on the hill. So one thing that we did was we had to change out and pour new concrete steps going down into the garage because they were just too steep. These are a lot more shallow. They're a lot easier to traverse. And then on the other side, there's even a place where God forbid we need to put in some kind of ramp we can. So we thought through that before we bought the cottage. Okay, so now here's a fun little thing. So the Encore Azalea standards um, that are over here are going to move to the front. Now, why? Because we have, we actually have our first frost on the horizon. It gets here next week. On Friday, my friend Victor is gonna come over. He always helps me move all of my plants that are not winter hardy into my friend John's greenhouse. And he's done that for years and he will do it again this year. One of the things that's not winter hardy, I will show you when we move to the front, are those huge Eugenia topiaries. And what I'm going to do is replace these where the Eugenia topiaries are now. So I can do the same thing. I can set these pots down into those excavated holes. These are more frost hardy and more cold tolerant than those Eugenia. But I'll talk about that a little bit, a little bit later. Um, so what does that tell me about this space? Now that finally those are gone, it tells me I need to plant a little something right here to hide this box. And it, it might be, I don't mind that this is asymmetrical, so it may be just like a boxwood ball or something. I did decide to adorn my garage door with a little something. And these are just dead iris fronds, iris leaves that I picked up on a walk. And then all I did was just tie a string around a piece of corn, ornamental corn, some leaves, and it makes kind of a nice little swag. So I'm, I'm liking that. The bulb that goes in here, I think I told you guys that I got rechargeable bulbs and these are being charged right now. And so when that gets in place, this will be a little bit, a little bit more cozy, especially when I get one more thing planted right here and when these grow up. So that's kind of what's going on over in this area. I think I pointed out that I got some, some new small trash cans that will house my soil and my gravel. Um, a number of you have commented that you were concerned and thought maybe I needed to attach that to the fence. And I might, but it's actually very, very sturdy. So I'm not too concerned about that at this, at this point. Stuart, if you don't mind over here, and by the way, a number of you have, have 
as I talk about my hose, you've recommended that I get a hose link. Um, in the past, I used those giraffe hose reels. I don't want to use those because the places where they would hang are just too exposed, or in this case, it has to go around a corner, and that's really not optimal for me right now. So that is something that I'm not, I am not considering, particularly as I await the surround for the air conditioner to be built. But why I asked you over here, Stuart, <laughs> was to show you that you can see where I'm starting to make headway. I've already started taking out some of those uh, foxglove seedlings and I'm transplanting them to the front now that we've gotten some rain and it's cooler and I'll show you how I do that, how I do that in a bit. So coming back over this way, again, these will move. I'm already starting to see the vision for the hydrangeas over in this area. Lots of new growth that's come out on both the Annabelle's and this mammoth oak leaf hydrangea. So I anticipate that next year, this whole area will be engulfed in hydrangeas. And you can see here one thing that I've done. If I've got any malleable canes, of hydrangeas. Well, this one I just broke in the process, but I am going to start bending them over, securing them to the ground with some kind of floral pick or even a stone or a piece of brick would work. So they put out root growth and then I will have, um, I will have another plant that is still attached to the mother hydrangea, but nevertheless will kind of spread the love of this whole area. You can see right here, Stuart, where I've already done it with this branch right there. And at the leaf node, I secured it and then I piled up some dirt on top of it. And look at it, it's already turning into a pretty little plant. So, <clears throat> A lot of you have asked, so what plants do I take to the greenhouse and which ones do I not? Well, do I not take? Okay, let's talk a little bit about some of them I do not take while we help. Do you guys remember, if you followed me for a while, this is my question of the day. If you have followed me for a while, do you remember this laurel? Um, that was just a free plant that I dug up from the other house and I'm transforming into a topiary. Look at how big it's gotten. I even had it as a house plant for a while. I'm gonna to have to transplant it into a larger pot. Now, is this one of them that I will take to the greenhouse? No, it's not. I will not take it. I won't take any of the Blue Point junipers that I have also topiaried. I will not take in any of the boxwood that are in large pots. If the boxwoods are elevated, I will probably lower them and kind of shelter them a little bit so that they have less cold air circulating around the root zone. But that it's not that cold yet. So I'll, I will wait. I will wait on that. The elephant bush I've got two of them. It's a little windy, Stuart. It is. The elephant bush, this large one, and the one in the rectangular pot, both of those will go to the greenhouse because they are not cold hardy. But what I will do is I will take a picture of them and how I've got them placed in case I want to replicate this next year and because my memory isn't always so great. Um, I did a little bit of pruning on the Japanese maple, someone commented, oh, there were so many cross branches that I missed and things like that. And I, I will still do that. It does need to be done, but I'm gonna hold off until till late winter or next year before I do that, because otherwise I would lose some of the pretty canopy and a little bit of, of the privacy to this area back here. And because I want to see what it looks like when it ultimately changes color. And then, yes, we have already had a couple of fires, Stuart. Mm -hmm. And so my firewood is right out here. I have showed you this before, but if you are new to the channel, I wanted to point that out because many of you in process wondered why I had an incest or an inset over here. 
and why I didn't complete this. And yes, there will be there will be railings. I've told you all of this, all of this before. Um, one thing I will do is I will carefully check any of the plants that I'm taking into the greenhouse to see if they have any signs of scale or spider mite or powdery mildew, anything like that. And if they do, I will spray them with some kind of organic insect insecticidal soap before they go in. In some cases, I might even give them a prune because I don't want to introduce any critters into the greenhouse. So I will be very, try to be very responsible about that. Here's another blue point juniper over here. I'm keeping all of these outside for now. They might move inside a little bit later as the holidays approach. Just, just temporarily. The swan thirsty. Is that one thirsty? So yes. The swan is yes. Drinking. Yes, it is. It's thirsty, and there's some there's some water <laughs> in there from the, from the rain. Yes. What's that called? Is that called anthropomorphism when you when you uh, ascribe yep. human characteristics to animals everything. or to or to <laughs> everything to everything? Um, will I? Will I bring this in? No, I may take some cuttings, but I may not even do that. Uh, I haven't decided. What I am going to do is make a fabulous, some kind of fabulous arrangement, floral arrangement out of, out of these gorgeous burgundy and very statuesque stems. I think that will be really, really beautiful. And I'm gonna do that. Um, in tandem with something else in the front window box that I'm going to show you. And then this will just come out. It will die back from the first hard frost. And that's, you know what? That's okay. I am happy to report that finally I got all of the remaining boxwoods and everything in the ground. I have showed you that inspiration picture ad nauseum, uh, but they are in the ground and you can see that when I planted them, I did disturb some of the mulch around them. And I will definitely be replenishing, replenishing some of that probably around the time that I plant my bulbs, which will be a week or two before Thanksgiving. Now, Stuart, come over here and let's do, let's do a little weeding. So this is how I weed sometimes, <laughs> just like that. When the weeds are so small and they barely set out any root growth whatsoever, you can simply just scuff them off with your hand or your foot, or I could use some kind of tool. But that way I get them before they grow big and tall and definitely before they set seed. And it will be very easy then to weed in this backyard. In here, the, the Swiss chard will remain. I will maybe take cuttings of the rest of this stuff. But this is what I am hoping to do in a gorgeous, a gorgeous arrangement is take some of this purple Joseph's coat. Oh, I really like this one. Yeah, maybe. Oh, you like that one? You like the pinky ones. But for Halloween. I like the, con the crazy color contrasty ones. The crazy color contrasty? Yeah. I think that's the official horticultural. <laughs> I think, that's, I think that's the official horticultural <laughs> term. But as long as I'm over here, I'll stay over here. Okay. How fun will this be to do? I can't get this to cut right now. I should have had my scissors with me. But to do a very Halloween-y. Here's a great Tessie Messy idea, Tessie Messy design. This would be beautiful to do a Halloween-y arrangement and then just go out and get some pop of bright, bright orange, maybe in a Gerber daisy. Um, I could do it more elevated, maybe with some roses. Hopefully you will see whatever arrangement I come up with this weekend because I'm going to try, try being the operative word, to have the cottage inside all ready for uh, my own fall cottage tour now that I'm getting ready to put the garden to bed. So no promises, 
No promises, but hopefully on Sunday on The Garden Life, I will try to do that. By the way, if you have not subscribed, please do so. Please press the like button. Please <laughs> share with others, blah, 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 blah. Um, so you two can kind of participate and follow along. But I think that's just a beautiful combo, don't you? Yep, it's orange. Yeah, it does need orange. Orange, maybe even, I could maybe even do some gray. Um, my sweet peas are growing up. My carrots are growing up. And I wish the greens would speed up a little bit, but I think it's just been too hot. Hopefully now that we've gotten some rain, they will speed up a little bit more and I'll actually be able to have um, a homegrown green salad from my own little box potage back here. The olive trees, the olive trees will have to go into the greenhouse and I'm always sad to see them go, but the olive trees will have to go. Um, and you know what, that's, that's okay. It's always a good feeling to know that they are kind of nestled in and I don't have to worry about them or water anymore. Let me just do some more weeding over here, Stuart. I got a really high end <laughs> tool right there. Yeah, yeah. And you can see that really takes no time at all. It does take consistency, but that's all it takes. Um, I am loving the way all of this stuff is filling in. It makes me happy. It makes me very happy. Over here, yes, the fern, the angel wing begonias, which never really performed up to my expectations. I think they got moved around too much and it was simply too hot. But these will go into the greenhouse, so I'll have them for next year. Um, my myrtle topiary, my really sad, my myrtle inventory <laughs> really declined in the process of this move. I lost a number of them because I was constantly moving them around. I was not a good steward. I was not a good mama. And I'm going to definitely have to replenish them. So Angela at Passiflora, I need to be in touch with you, but I may do that. I may do that in the spring. I may just wait and do that in the spring. Snuck a little topiary in there. I snuck a little topiary in there, but everything, <laughs> with the exception of those chives, all of this will go into the greenhouse. Um, I did put the cover, since it was going to rain, I put the cover on my new fire pit, and we'll put all of those links below. Love, love, love my fire pit. Um, I also really liked the way this whole area looked when I took, 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 I took down the umbrella <laughs> and I liked the way it made this area seem larger and more yeah, spacious. I know it's the same thing, yeah. 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 It's kind of, it's kind of fun. Now, did I need the shade in the dead of summer? Yes. But right now the beautiful cedar trees are just fine and it's got, I think it's got a really cozy, cozy vibe to it. I did decide, if I told you this, please forgive me. I know I'm repetitive. I, I did decide on a planter box for underneath there. I think I mentioned that in, in the last backdoor video. And Kayla will be working on that. And then something else that's coming up. Oh, and by the way, I all of these, these little tiny boxwoods, these will not go into the greenhouse. I will protect them huddled all together in a quarter and I will blow leaves or something on them and it will kind of protect them. If it gets bitter, bitter cold, I might even put them in the garage. And speaking of, of leaf mulch, um, and covering up with, with leafy debris to insulate them. I'll be getting out uh, my leaf shredder that's in the garage and I will be shredding a bunch of leaves and also using that to top dress and mulch some of the plants both in the front and in the back. Okay, let's take just a moment to do, uh, give you a little forecast. I, if you get my newsletter and if you do not, you might want to sign up for it. Just go to lindavotter.com. Um, the plant of the month is this Southern Living Cryptomeria. And I absolutely adore, I adore it. I love, look at, look at that pretty lush, dense new growth. And, uh, 
and Jim Putnam told me that it will indeed be very, very heat tolerant. So I'm planting quite a bit of it around the perimeter of the back patio. But something else I'm going to do is I am going to do some projects with it for this winter, some winter container plantings that I think will be really, really fun. And so stay tuned, stay tuned for that. Uh, I think some of you were concerned about the top to this table and whether or not it was going to be weatherproof. Well, this is acacia wood and it probably will start to gray over time and that's just fine with me. I actually want it to do that. And it's already been a great serving board for us when we entertain. My buddy Matt uh, came over to help me put the fire pit together and he had a brilliant suggestion for the Christmas tour because I'm going to have a big Christmas tree that you can see through the great room windows. But he said, ooh, if, if the weather is nice and if you've got a fire going outside, this would be a great station to have some hot cider. Wouldn't that be wonderful out here, Stuart? Hot, mm -hmm. fragrant cider. So I think that's something that I might tap into. Um, I'll be sharing more details with you about the Christmas tour in the event um, you want to come in from out of town and see some of the beautiful homes in this area decorated for Christmas and of course my little my little cottage here. So Stuart, what do you say we take a break and go around to the front but give everybody just kind of a little 360 of, of the back. This is after all what we do on these walkabouts is just give you a little status update. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> this is kind of fun. I still have not connected my rain barrel, you guys, but look what I found in the garage when I was cleaning it out. I found the piece <laughs> that I used at the other house that I brought here so that I don't have to have any new stuff cut. We'll be able to just recycle, reuse, repurpose this that I already have and connect the rain barrel. And sadly, I did not get it connected before we got some very, very welcome rain a couple days ago. Now I've got two Oakland Hollies in these mammoth pots flanking the chimney and those obviously will not go into the greenhouse either but I will definitely be putting another layer of mulch on there um, to make sure that they are insulated for winter and they have grown considerably so they really seem to like this location which in some ways look at how much this one has grown Stuart look at that it's crazy this one has really grown quite a bit. How tall will it get? Uh, it, gosh, it may get 10 feet tall and I will have to prune this a little bit. Uh, it might even get taller than that. I'd have to look at the ultimate height, but it gives me evergreen presence on this, on this side. But what I started to say earlier was it loves this exposure because it gets afternoon shade and just morning sun, as does this entire bed. Now, unexpectedly, I this is one of my favorite vantage points, looking from here back towards the social patio. It's one of my favorite my favorite little vignettes, I think, from the cottage. Very unexpectedly, I did I had no idea it would turn out to be as, as I don't know, I think charming as it is. Um, in here, we did a video recently on plants for tight, narrow spaces. And I am trying um, one of these, these uh, gardenias right here from the Southern Living Plant Collection. And hopefully it will not get too large for this space and it will overwinter. Um, I've got some terra hydrangeas here too that are putting out all sorts of new growth. But look at how beautifully all of the ajuga is doing. It's even blooming. So I anticipate that it will fill and consume most of the bare spaces along here before too long and it will be absolutely delightful in the spring when it's blooming blue and in tandem 
with all of these Encore Azaleas and ultimately, eventually, with the Moondance Hydrangeas. And look what a pretty, pretty pink they're turning. This was my first year to grow them, and I have to say, I like them as much, maybe if not more, than White Wedding, which is a, a tall order, I know, I know. I will be, rather quickly, putting some guide wires up and around this door to hopefully start training the rose, which has been very, very slow growing, the rose, but also um, some clematis, clematis, which will grow up and over it. And this one even put out, it's, it's broken off, but you can see the remnants of, of what it looked like, the pretty color, it was a double form. The taiga, um, and probably I, I mispronounced that. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure the pronunciation police will be out there. They will tell me how, how to properly, properly pronounce it. Um, more of these Oakland, hydro, um, Oakland hollies here that will flank either side of this door. And do I really care if they kind of cover up these windows? No, because this is the door to nowhere and the windows to nowhere. But I nevertheless, it doesn't keep me from trying to um, transform it into a very, very charming vignette. And so I shall. Um, had I had any idea these dahlias were going to get this big, they were started from seed, I would have done a better job of staking them, but there's always next year. There's always next year for that. Now let's talk a little bit about the window box. So I am harvesting the last of the tomatoes because this tomato bush plant is about to be yanked out. And you Look see, yeah, I've already picked a bunch of them, but there's a number of them. And I waited till the last minute because like, well, you can see here, it's still spitting out a few. And yeah, there's some green ones and I'll probably, when I pull it out, I'll probably harvest some of those too. We did that in a previous video, I think, Stuart. Ooh, here's a. Here's a little cache of them in there. So I will be pr uh, pulling this out. Why? Because we're getting a first frost. Now I've waited to do that because it still looks really beautiful, I think. Yeah. Um, and I haven't wanted to do that because it has looked, looked very nice. Let me see if I've got any of my pruners up here. because I am going to cut this stuff back and or pull it out, see what will remain, and then I'll be replanting it. And what will I be replanting it with? Well, probably some selected evergreens. Uh, see what performed in there. If the, I had some Irish mint euonymus in there, and I'll see whether or not those are still healthy and made it through a very hot and rough summer. I can do the rest of this later. <laughs> but once you start, it's hard to stop. And let's see, what else do I have in here? Oh, look. See, I've still got a number of peppers in here. Ooh. I know, so that's kind of fun. Surprising. And that, yeah, and the peppers, the peppers will come out because they don't like the cold. They sure loved this heat though. So I will take them out. I will also, and I probably will leave in, I've got some of this chef's choice rosemary and I will probably leave it in here since it adapted and seems happy. Um, but a lot of this will get ripped out. And I'm sorry guys, when I'm over here, I just can't resist. Look, there's some hiding in here. It's some Dusty Miller and I'll probably take this and I might plant it out along the border of the front terrace. Now this is what I was talking about. I'm hoping that I can cut a huge mass of this 
and then make a fabulous purple bouquet. Ooh, maybe even with some of that purple lantana. Yeah, for the lacy part. Oh, look at Stuart. Look at Stuart with his, with his design <laughs> eye. Um, but I'll probably also, as much as I hate to, I will probably pull out all of the lantana because it will succumb to frost. I will probably get the asparagus fern and pull it out and try to overwinter it. But I think for so many of you that were detractors at the beginning and thought that this was just gonna be way too wild and way too um, unappealing, well, I dare say, I think it turned out pretty fabulous. And I loved, I loved how raucous it was with um, the pineapple guava and all of these things in here. And so I will probably put plant some bulbs in here, some evergreens, some pansies, maybe a few snapdragons, I'm not really sure. And then the rest of it will just be evergreen presents. But this will get completely redesigned and it has definitely, well, thank you for your service, Window Box. You have definitely, you have definitely performed beyond my expectations. One thing I will definitely do this weekend, I'm going to be talking about my garden journal. And by the way, Stuart, right here, let's put uh, where, how you can order my garden journal. But I'm going to show you a tutorial on just kind of how I use mine. You guys, um, obviously know how to use a garden journal, but I'm going to just show you some ideas of how I use mine and the one that I published in particular. Um, so sadly, all of this will need to go and I will probably replace with pansies or viola. The Eugenia one, two, Three. Remember when I first planted that Eugenia Stewart and how kind of pitiful it was? It's flushed out, flushed out quite a bit. So all of these will go to the greenhouse. I've had these for I don't know how many years now. And this is where I will plop in those standard azaleas. I will plop them in the holes. Okay, it's a good time to tell them that again. Huh? Yes, yes. So you can see in here how I just planted the pots. So we'll just excavate those and I will just plop in the others and that that will I'll still have that kind of presence that statuesque presence of the topiaries here and if it really really gets bitter cold then I can just lift them out and put them someplace that's a little bit more protected um, also all of this will ultimately have to go away and will probably be replaced with pansies and things it is going to break my heart to pull this stuff out because it is so happy here and it has performed so so well so in here is where I believe I told you that I was planting, transplanting from the pot in the back where I had seeded some foxglove. You can see in here all of these fuzzy leaved plants. Oh, I got them. Okay, all in here, I've planted them. They're all running back in there. There's a trail of them. There's a trail of them. Look at this mammoth one. So How they, long ago did you put that one in? That one must have gone in when we first started the garden. Okay, so if it's I, been there a while. It's been there a while, one of the reasons it's so large. But this is a fairly recent transplant, and it's pretty large. And you can see these two over here that are complaining a little bit. These are ones. <laughs> they oh, are they look sad. I know, they look sad. <laughs> they are sad. But they'll perk up. They'll perk up. Um, once they get established. So I wanted this whole ribbon of foxglove to kind of, kind of flank me on either side of Lemon Lane. So more of the other ones that I'm transplanting will go, here's another huge one I just planted, but these will kind of go on this side of Lemon Lane and so then I'll be bordered on both sides and I think it will seem very cottagey and very magical and whimsical. And then back in here, this I will, in the background, I will plant some tulips and things. So what is my objective, my design objective with the tulips? Well, the tulips at the fairy tale house, they were more interspersed in the bed areas. 
you've got, yes, you can put a picture right here, Stuart. Okay. Here, I am wanting to be a little bit more linear and methodical about it. So once all of this Joseph's coat is removed, and yes, I will save some of it. These are just annuals. I'm going to remove those, and then I will have a border of tulips that runs up and down the walkway. So I will be greeted by all of these tulips and these beautiful better boxwood, tufts of green. And then they will also turn the corner and they will frame the upper terraces along this way facing south. And then I want to give the illusion as if they are spilling down the terrace, spilling down the rolling terrace into these beds here. So there will be some tufts of them in the interior of these beds, which is one of the reasons that I've left some blank space. And then around the edge, along the edge here, this is where I will plant pansies all along the edge in here. And then the tulips will be in the center. Then later, this Veronica will then come into full bloom. I'll actually probably at that point plant a little bit more Veronica so that it will be in bloom for the summertime. And this is one of the reasons that I definitely wanted to overseed the rolling terraces because imagine the difference of how this will look next spring with all of these tulips if this were brown and if it were the color green it is now. I think it'll be so much more magical that I overseeded just these berms right here. The witches probably won't hang around for the spring show. <laughs> They'll probably go in, but who knows, maybe a bunny rabbit or, or something will appear. The pentas, these will be, I'll probably plant some kale, maybe some cabbages, some more pansies, more violas in these urns that, that kind of greet you as you come up the steps. And then I will probably also try to overwinter some of the pentas. So we'll see, we'll see how that works, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do that. Why am I doing that? Well, because they've already reached the mass that I want them to reach to give me the effect that I want them to have on the upper terrace. If I started over next year with the little four inch plants that I had initially, it would take them a while to get the vavoom look that I've got right now. And so to the extent I can do that, maintain the root ball, I'll probably cut them back, but I'll try to keep the root balls viable, put them in some, some big plastic pots and try to salvage them salvage them for next year. I'll do a little bit more deadheading, but not a whole lot. Um, mostly so that I just kind of have an idea of where my blank spaces are and where I might want to plant some things like some lettuces, some cabbages, some dill um, that will also be part of this of the spring shoe. And Right after we get the tulips in place, that is probably when I'll come back in and I will put another layer of mulch and maybe some shredded leaves. In this case, I'll probably mix some of that Happy Grow mulch that I get at Lowe's with shredded leaves and I will use that as a mulch. Once that gets in place, then I'll come back over with some seeds that I want to germinate for spring. Maybe some golden fever few, some dill, um, parsley, maybe some things like that, that I think will ultimately germinate and be part of the spring show. Here's another Eugenia that will go into the greenhouse. Looks very much like a boxwood, but the boxwoods, they stay outside. These over here, 
near the diamond windows, which by the way, I just cleaned. You, you can see my, my glass cleaner on the table. I just cleaned those windows and some on the east side because after we did some repair work to those windows, they were a mess. So now it makes me happy to see what they look like on the inside. So, uh, so those boxwood topiaries, those will remain as will this boxwood ball. And that's, and you know, that's good. Now, have I ever lost them? Yes, I lost them the one year it got down, I think to maybe minus 18 or something. Um, that was just last year. Actually, they made it through minus 18. What they didn't make it through was the year we had the bad ice storm. I'm, all of my, all of my uh, weather events are starting to merge together, but those will, will be able to stay outside again. I will mulch all of the pots again pretty heavily. Some of them, I may or may not plant a little skirt of violas or pansies around the base. I, that remains to be seen. I will let this boxwood basil stay as long as possible for the seed to dry, and then I will harvest a lot of the basil. Or, but I also, I really want to keep it in place as long as possible because look at how, ma how much bee activity it still has. Yeah, it's pretty white spots in there. Yeah, yeah. So definitely, there's still there's still a lot of pollinator activity in there, and so I want to keep it keep it for those guys. So that is what is going on on the cottage on the hill for this Wednesday walkabout. Please make sure that you comment below if you've got any questions. Let you know. Let us know. Um, we try. I try to look at the comments, but there's a lot of them. So we just do all I can say is we do the best we can. If you want some of the garden gloves or a copy of my book or some of those things, Southern Living Plants, that we gave away in our last Lind of Otter Live, and you have not contacted us, please let us know with all of your pertinent information. You can email us at support at lindavotter.com and definitely subscribe to our email, which will go out, I think, later today. So, Stuart, have I forgotten anything? I don't think so. Well, that's how it is when you are prepping uh, prepping to overwinter some of your plants and get your garden beds ready for cold weather.